what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to take a look at table view section headers and custom headers so basically here we have a app with a few sections and you can see that the section header for each of these sections uh, rather each alternating section uh, is custom so we've got an image here we've got a customized label here with a thinner font and uh, this is all custom framed as well so we're going to go ahead and take a look at how you can implement a basic title for your section similar to the settings app or any other system app as well as you know go nuts with this and design your own custom headers and uh, basically you get the flexibility to design as you will so this video actually is inspired by many of you in the comments asking for it so here i am make sure you destroy that like button as always get excited ready get excited and let's dig in Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. Before we actually continue, I'll go ahead and call out that we are on uh, Xcode 12 here along with iOS 14, which recently dropped. So if anything looks a little different, that's the reason why. So go ahead and upgrade your environment. Uh, we're gonna select a single view application and I'm gonna go ahead and call this table section headers and uh, make sure you have Swift selected UI kit as well as storyboard. And let's go ahead and uncheck this include tests since we won't actually work on tests. Let's go ahead and save this. We'll drop it right on our desktop and jump right in. So first things first, let's uh, select a simulator in this dropdown. Uh, I'll go ahead and pick the one that I've got open, which I believe is the 11 Pro Max. And let me also expand this Xcode window to give ourselves some more room to work. And we're gonna be working in the viewcontroller.swift file. So let's come in here. Let me close this right panel actually. Go ahead and hit Command R to build and run. And we should see our app open up like so in our simulator. My simulator is in dark mode. So if you hit command shift A, you can switch between light and dark. And there we are. So before we talk about section titles and section title views for uh, the header, we need to actually create a table. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a basic table view. We're gonna do it all in code, uh, no storyboard. So it's gonna be a UI table view. And we're going to create it in this anonymous closure uh, pattern that if you've been following the channel that you are familiar with. We're going to return the table and we are also going to register uh, a cell for UI table view cell dot self with an ID of cell to our table. We then want to add this as a sub view. So we'll add it like so. And then we need to also give this a frame so it actually shows up on our screen. So we're gonna go ahead and override view did layout sub views. And I'm gonna say in here, table view dot frame is view dot bounds. And let's see, we also wanna assign this guy's data source so we can give it some data. So I'm gonna go ahead and say table view dot data source is self. And uh, in a second here, we'll get the error for conformance, the reason uh, we're getting the error is because we don't conform to the UI table view data source. We're gonna add that up there and we're gonna hit this error and then hit fix and that'll stub out the data source functions we need. Let me go ahead and move these to the bottom. And for number of rows, let's simply return five for now. For the cell for row, we're gonna dequeue a cell by saying let cell is table view DQ cell with reusable identifier cell. And that is the ident identifier we registered up above. We wanna go ahead and return the cell. And I'm just gonna assign the text labels text in the cell to be hello world. 
And we're going to go ahead and here say, uh, after the colon, we're going to show the section and row. And this way we'll get every, uh, every row to look a little different, every table view cell. Go ahead and hit Command R to build and run. Hopefully we have no errors. And we should see our one section here, which is the default number of sections with uh, section zero for all of them and row zero all the way to four. So first things first, we wanna add uh, more than one section that we can deal with for titles and uh, section title views for the header. So we wanna override, rather implement, uh, number of sections. And I'm gonna go ahead and go with 10. So let's go ahead and do 10 there and hit run, command R. We'll see we have our multiple sections now and the section number is in fact incrementing. And let me go ahead and put this in dark mode so it's a little easier to see. So we also don't have any space between our uh, sections now. So let's go ahead and fix that by updating our table views style and it's a uh, frame. So we wanna update this to use frame and style. Frame is zero by default and style is grouped. Go ahead and hit run one more time. All right, cool. So section titles. So that's actually a baked in function. I believe it's a part of the delegate, but let's see if it's a part of the data source. So let's see, section index title table view section for section index. This is not what we want. So what we want to go ahead, in fact, and do is table view delegate itself. We want to add conformance to the UI table view delegate up here and go ahead and hit command B just to make sure everything's still building. And now the function should be available to us and it is table view section title and uh, it's section, let's see, let's make sure this is the right function. Table view section for section index title, title at index path. So this one actually returns an integer. So this is not what we want. So let's type in title there and see what we get. So there's table view, title for header. That's actually what we want. Title for header in section. So I'm simply going to return section title. And we're gonna go ahead and append in here the current section position so it's different every time. Go ahead and run. And this is uh, as simple as it really gets. Um, this is how you add a title to the section header for each section. So we can see section title zero here. Uh, as we scroll, we can see the number of the section title incrementing all the way to nine, since we have 10 sections and it's enumerated by zero. But what if we wanted the section header for each section to be something custom? Right now it's just this weird label, maybe not the nicest. So there is another function, which I believe is view for header in section, so we want, there's title for header and view for header. Now view for header, as you can see, this function returns a UI view, uh, UI view optional rather. So we can actually create our own custom header view. And uh, the height of this is actually controlled by another function. So we can provide a height here. So let me just give this a CZ rect, zero, zero, view dot width, view dot frame dot size dot width rather, Let's say height of 100 and go ahead and return header here. And we want to implement height for header in section. And we're going to say 100. Go ahead and run and you'll see that there is this 100 pixel uh, height now for each section header. But we can't really see it because it's clear. So let's go ahead and set a background color of red and go ahead and run. And you'll see we have this uh, 30 point header, which is uh, vertical. You can see it's red now. Uh, we also have the default padding for the footer. So you can actually go ahead and override that if you want as well. But anyways, this is how you would create any custom UI view. So let's say we wanted a uh, icon plus a label. And 100 is maybe a little too large, but let's just stick with 100 for the sake of this demo. So let me give this a background color of secondary system background. And before we go ahead and return this header, we want to create a image view and a label. So I'm going to say let image view is a UI image view. And we're going to go ahead and create it with a system image 
which is, should be in this list, looks like we're missing it. Rather, we're gonna create this image with an image, and the image is gonna take a system image, like so. And I'm gonna stick with house. And we're gonna say image view dot tint color is going to be system blue. We're gonna add this as a sub view to our header. And we also wanna give this guy a frame. So I'm gonna say image view dot frame is CZ rect uh, five, five. And we'll just say here header dot frame dot size dot height minus 10. So it's vertically centered. Uh, rather vertically centered and the width and height will be a square because it's a ratio. Let's go ahead and hit command R, make sure that image shows up. All right, we have this obnoxiously large home showing up now. Looks like it's a little distorted. So on the image view, we can actually even go ahead and say the content mode is scale aspect fit. And before we run it, let's actually uh, go ahead and create a label as well. So I'm gonna say a label is a label with a frame and the frame is going to be, uh, we want the uh, width of the image view plus 10. So there's some buffer. The Y is gonna also be five like the image view. The width we'll do in a second. The height will simply say is the header. The header's height subtracting 10, five, which gives us a buffer of five from the top and bottom. And the width is going to be let me actually line break this so it's a little cleaner to read. The width is going to be the width of the header subtracting 15 for the buffer on all sides as well as subtracting the width of the image. Next up, we wanna go ahead and add this as a sub view like so. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a text of custom section header. And we'll also go ahead and append in here the section uh, parameter, which comes in from the function itself. And that'll obviously be different for every section. And let's see, let's also give this a, whoops, let's also give this a different font. So it kind of looks a little different. We'll say we want a system font with a size and weight. Let's go with 22 and thin. Let's go ahead and hit command R and let's see what this looks like. So cool, there you have it. So we have uh, an unusually large home icon here. We have our uh, label, which is a custom section header. It's uh, thin. So uh, essentially what I wanna highlight here is the two approaches for creating section headers is A, through a simple title, which the function provides you a nice clean interface in doing, or B, you can create a custom section header uh, with your own UI views, your own sub views, uh, the whole nine yards with this uh, view for header in section function. The other thing that I'll go ahead and call out is that this function here returns UI view optional. So you don't necessarily always have to have a section header for a given section. For example, if we wanted every other section to have no section header, we could simply say if section modulo two, AKA if it's even, the section position, we're just gonna simply return nil. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and do all that work below and return a section. So if I go ahead and create it now, you'll see the first one we have no header and only the even ones has a header. So actually to, to do the even, we would actually just inverse this. So if uh, modulo two does not equal zero, every even um, position does not have a header. And basically that's, that's, uh, that's it. That's how you would create a section header with a title or a custom section header with your own views. That said, if you haven't destroyed the like button already, make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm. Comment any questions down below, concerns, video suggestions, whatever it may be. Love hearing from you guys. If you haven't destroyed the subscribe button as well yet, make sure to do that for daily Swift videos. Thanks for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one.